What are you talking about? I have a podcast called Sex Talk with my mom. You think I haven't had sex in a year? Excuse me. What? <laughs> I have a podcast called Sex Talk with my mom. I'm definitely had sex in a year. Welcome to Sex Talk with my mom. I'm Cam Potter. And I'm Karen Lee Potter. That's my mother. And that's my son. We chat about sex on a weekly basis and all the things you typically don't talk about with a parent. We like to make the most uncomfortable conversations comfortable. So strap in. Strap on. And enjoy the ride. Welcome to Sex Talk with my mom. I'm Cam Potter. And I'm Karen Lee Potter. This is my wonderful mother, and we get to have a weekly sex talk. What more would any mother want than a weekly sex talk with their son? I don't think there's anything more in life that you can ask for. And that's why we start each episode by including you, you sneaky little freak. Our listeners are all sneaky freaks. So this is the question of the week. What sexual experience do you regret not acting on? This was actually a recommended question to us by Sneaky Freak Drew. Thank you very much, Drew. You know, th- Mother. Yes? We've both lived many decades. I live a few more than you. Okay. Do you have any experiences that you regret not acting on? Yes. You do? I Ever since I heard one of my friends said that she did a... Um, a foursome. A foursome, like, uh, like a swingers thing? No, it was way before that. I'd even heard about that kind of stuff. It was She was in college, and she said she did a foursome. And mm. I thought, wow, I never did a foursome ever. What about but a threesome? I, I never did a threesome either. So you... I kind of I did a little threesome. I was with a guy, and someone else was in another room, and I could hear them. So that's kind of threesome-ish, but no, that's not really. Yeah, not really. Yeah, it, it's been, that's not even vanilla. That's it's boring, bland. <laughs> it's like rice pudding. You're rice pudding right now. I, I feel like I had an experience that I was with somebody, and I just thought we were going to kiss, as usual. And then he's, like, getting all hot and bothered, and we were in a hotel room, and, and at the point, and you don't know who this person is. Anyway. Good. Anyway, this person said. Well, like, what's, what's that, what is that disclaimer? I well, wasn't I trying you, to know. I didn't want you to, I'm not guessing want, who these partners are of yours. All right. Okay. So I didn't want you to start guessing or thinking it's your dad or anything like that. Okay. But anyway, he eventually says, "Well, I'm going to get. I'm going to leave if this is at all. You know, it's a, it's going it's going nowhere here." Oh wow. And so he's about to leave, and I, I'm opening the door for him to leave, and then I'm like, "What the hell am I doing? He's freaking gorgeous. He's a. I'm not going to say anything more." But I'm like, I'm going to pull this guy right back in. I go, come back here. So I I didn't regret it. (laughs) It was close to regretting it. What made you want to hold off in the first place? I don't know, because I had in my mind, every every time it always is the same. It's like I'm like a broken record. I think it's going to just be kissing and a little little touchy-feely, and it always ends up the other way around. But why do you, it sounds like you want it to to be kissy or a little touchy-feely at first. Yeah. What what leads but you to want that? To... to me is the fun part. Okay, so the actual the other part, the actual the intercourse is, is or a, whatever, yeah. is not so fun. Yeah. Well, what do you think about that? No, so I I, I honestly feel like sometimes I'm also in the situation where I'm like, oh, let's do a little kissing and petting. Why why do we have to? We start fucking, then I have to. It gets so in my head about you know you, you, <laughs> all the all the shit that comes with that but i you know i know my own neuroses you know i'm concerned about the stis i'm concerned about the pregnancies i'm concerned about the 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 emotions that, that flow after fucking so what what is it for you though that leads you to want not to do that at first i honestly think it's probably a little bit of all those things except for the pregnancy part because i was past pregnancy oh interesting age. So it is kind of like the the emotions and the the STIs for you. I don't even know if it's the emotions. Just STIs then. <laughs> Probably just STIs. Wow, I didn't think that even that cross your mind when you're what? choosing. To, what yeah, are you I, talking about? I didn't think that cross your mind. You the mom, you make fun of me for being concerned about sexual health. You you have you don't give a fuck. I don't make fun of you. you for, literally every episode. No, what I'm concerned about and what I make fun about is is that you don't have sex and you're still worried about STIs. <laughs> no, that's not the case. It's well, not sometimes the case. it's been the case in the past that you, nine months later, thought that you impregnated somebody. Seven months. 
seven months later, you thought you impregnated someone, and you didn't even impregnate them. So okay, but I had sex with them, and the condom got that, loose. That 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 yeah. Well, I mean, I, especially nowadays with Roe v. Wade and everything, I can see you getting a little more neurose, a little more neurotic about making sure that there's some serious contraception going on. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's pretty interesting. So you, so this was a moment where you bypassed those fears and you went for it, and you were excited because you you didn't regret it. Time out. What? I never said I was fearful. Okay. Well, I, I asked you, what prevents you from wanting to, to uh, have sex in the first place? And, and then you it said... It was more of like, it was more of a, I just don't want that to happen. Uh, it, so it's not it's a not fear, really. it's just awareness. Oh, this is a potential side effect. Yes. And I'd rather avoid this. Yes, mm. I like the way you rephrase that. That's exactly what. The, well, that's then I exactly. live. I don't live in a state of fear, mother. I'm currently. I'm just acknowledging that there's risks involved, and, and right. I prefer not to go through it. I mean, I think that makes perfect sense, especially you know from your point of view. This is the My first time of, you've ever said I've made sense. I have. You always think I'm so critical of you. I'm not at all. It's it's a fallacy. Okay. Uh, did you have any kind of sexual experience that you regretted not acting on? I was thinking about this question. You know, I'm a very picky, fucking prude fuck. You're um, a picky fucking prude fuck. And I'm a picky prude fuck, and I a choose not to engage plucky. with a lot of people. P- picky and plucky, yeah. <laughs> what do you mean you, t- you 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 have so many experiences? I don't know what do you mean you choose not to engage with. Over a lot the of people. years, there have been people that I could probably that I could probably have hooked up with that I've chosen not to. And I, I actually don't regret any of those experiences. I, I, th- I think I more so regret hooking up with people where I shouldn't, I should not have done that. There are way more regrets on that side of it. Not of, oh yeah, not the experiences where I, where I held off. It's, it's oh. where I actually continued forward when I was kind of on the fence just to push myself, and then it, it ended up resulting in not so fun experiences. I, I was waiting for you to blame it on me, saying. I heard the voice in your in my head from you saying, "Go for it, son." Yeah, yeah. Well, of course, it's of course your fault. Mother. I, I didn't get blamed. I'm so happy. Yeah, I'm being very kind today. Yeah, That's but very sweet. I regret uh, on the Alaskan cruise not asking for Kristen Walker's uh, <laughs> phone number. At, at that point, she probably didn't even have a phone number. It was probably when an you AOL, were, what, AOL wait, aim like you were messenger. like twelve. I know that that was a big regret of mine, I, and I I honestly think pretty much every cruise thereafter falling in love with a girl and not asking for her her information th- that was probably the biggest regret other than that no i don't i think that's mm, there might have been one person in college who i i knew had a little thing for me and who had it would have been nice to have just seen what it was like to maybe make out or something like that but didn't need to it didn't need to happen i'm fine with it no regrets right now uh, right. <laughs> for things that i didn't act on I, I actually like that. I like the fact that, you know, no matter what happens, the regrets, I've had a few. <laughs> was you just breaking a song? What was that? That was Frank Sinatra. Oh, yeah. I did it my way. Yeah. Oh, I can't believe my brain remembered where that line came from. Look at that. Well, Mother, but, yeah. Let's, so, let's turn to the Sneaky Freaks and find out what they did not act on that they regret not acting on. The first response we got I think you're going to like. This is from Spencer. Spencer says, when I was about 21, 11 years ago, an older gal, maybe like 40-ish, at least offered to buy me a drink while I was on a vacation in a college town. But I already had a drink coming, so I offered to buy her one and missed my opportunity to sleep with an older gal such as herself, I believe anyways. Okay, I don't fully understand this sentence, but it sounds like (laughs) there was some, some flirting, some drinks exchanged, and it was clear that she wanted to fuck this guy or girl. I don't know who Spencer is. Uh, and then Spencer did not act on this. Spencer goes on to say that and an older Swiss, Swedish lady at Burning Man. But I was in a relationship that time. Definitely the experience that got away. I will fulfill that experience one day. I love that that you thought I would like this because I totally love this. Yeah, you, it, it's there what were I've been saying all along. That, were, that, that he slept on. He he didn't he didn't he didn't act on those opportunities. Is that what right. you're saying? Well, that yeah yeah that was what I meant by sl- sleeping on them. He oh, did not he's... actually sleep on them. You, <laughs> you get what I meant. He slept on those opportunities. Do you know how many times I hear this that that you know where can I find a cougar and 
I want that. I want that. You know, in my what do you call that? Arsenal the, bag of tricks. Yeah, notch on my bedpost. You know, because you can do. You know, you can learn so much from an older woman and all mm-hmm. this stuff that I write about in my book. Mm-hmm. A little plug for my book. Fuck games, mm-hmm. date cougars. But my main thing is, um, it seems like it is on people's bucket lists. It's on the bucket list for Spencer for sure. And not for you? Mm, not really. Okay. I was I, I was reflecting on a time, you know, I I, I had uh, been very attracted to one of my bosses at, at a certain point. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. And a... but she was in a in a married relationship with kids. I'm very happy we didn't have any sexual interaction. You know? Why? What that would have caused such damage to the the relationship. It would have cre- created so much drama. Oh. And for what? Well, if if she was on the, you know, if, if things were going south anyway, maybe, and who knows? You don't know what they were, what if they had an open relationship? They didn't. They didn't. All right. Well, anyway. Well, thank you, Spencer. Uh, Spencer for, yeah. Thank you, Spencer, for the cougar, the cougar experiences. <laughs> Kylie says, I could have had a threesome with some football players in college, but I got scared and turned them down. Mm. I think that was a good move to turn that down. Really? I think that was not something she should regret because you hear about all these stories about these crazy football players taking advantage of young girls in college. I I, don't, I, I say you went, you acted on your gut and decided not to do it for the right reasons. Yeah, but maybe she wanted to be with these football players. Well, apparently she wrote that. That's one of the things that she regretted not doing. So Yeah, but she got yeah. scared. So I mean, it's understandable that she got scared. I, these are big, hulking men. <laughs> I would be fucking terrified. I, I would be terrified just being in a room with them. I can't see you in the room with three football players. Well, it'll be two football players and me. Oh, you're It's right. a threesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah it, she that, didn't have... It's very intimidating, though. Anyway, I feel for you, Kylie. And uh, if you regret it, I understand that as well. Dane says, it was many years ago when I went to a motorcycle rally. Very sweet and cute woman bartending wanted me to come back to her place. Still wish I had been able to just say yes and had the self-confidence to go with her. Oh, uh, okay. All right. What? Now I'm starting to remember some of my uh, regrets. Regrets? You've I, had a few. What I, What? what I, are you? I regret. I, I, I think, listen, I, 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 enjoy, I liked my prom experience and I enjoyed the woman that I brought to prom, but there was another girl that I was considering asking. Wait. I should <laughs> I, and uh, you know, it would have been way more physically intimate. And I asked that girl, I, and I regret not not acting on that. That that that's a regret. That's a regret. Definite regret, and also the fact that the girl that you did go with was wearing a promissory ring, yeah. which means she can't have sex until she got married. We didn't <laughs> even sleep anywhere near each other. She slept. I didn't even completely some elsewhere. Did she sleep in a different room altogether? Yeah, she did. <laughs> so I, oh. I regret that. I regret. Yeah. But I feel you know so what? bad. I for, had a fun time with her. Yeah, as long as you had a good time. But I do feel bad for her high school sex experiences. They're always there's a lot of drama associated with them. Yeah, did you notice that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, come come on, the kids are so young. All right, Dane, you. I, I feel for you on that motorcycle rally. Sweet, cute bartender. Oof. Wait a second. What? Do you do you have any regrets of Dane's sweet? A little <laughs> sweet bit. Part? Yeah, I kind of I, I I wish uh, we had done differently there, Dane. I think bartenders. I th- I said this on the podcast last week. Podcast uh, podcasters, bartenders seem to be getting lucky at the end of the evenings. Obviously, these people are all drinking. I mean, I would yeah. feel weird knowing that like this person had been drinking in front of me all night, and now they want to hook up, and I'm probably sober because I was working. Oh, maybe who knows if the bartender, but either way. Yeah. I don't, I don't know how weird. sober they are, but you know, you don't want, I've talked to bartenders. You don't want to take advantage of, um, someone that's like slashed, you exactly. know, that's a very bad idea. But if they're, if you know, obviously the bartender knows exactly how many drinks they're, they're pouring. It's very out true. But listen, yeah. if a bartender saw me drink, they would think that I'm sober as fuck and, and literally three sips in, I'd be hammered. <laughs> okay. Liz says, the sexual experience I regret not acting on is I had a chance to peg my ex-husband. I did not. Ooh. Ooh. Wait a second. Why did she want to peg him? Maybe because... Who doesn't want to, who doesn't want to peg someone? I have no desire to peg anybody. Yeah. You have a desire to peg someone? Well, I peg with my own penis, but maybe not with a... No, a, you a... don't count your penis as a peg. <laughs> maybe I peg with my own penis. 
<laughs> no, I, I, I that's I, not pegging. Some people want to get into this pegging. You okay. wouldn't, you wouldn't be excited about this if these really wanted to get pegged. No. Hmm. I think it's a generational thing, Mom. No, I, think I don't a lot, think it's... I think a lot of women my age want to be pegging. Why? Yeah, it's a different power dynamic. Yeah, I, I have zero desire for that. All right. That's a, well, wa- that's a waste of time. Well, Liz is upset that she didn't uh, peg her ex-husband, and uh, now he's he's the ex-husband, so well, maybe it's, maybe, like she's pegging maybe she wanted to take out some you know of her aggression on him. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's interesting. Hmm. You want to read Jay's? Yeah, JC, I turned down multiple one-night stands and a couple threesome opportunities in my early 20s because I was scared I'd blast too fast and ruin it. Took plenty of training, quote-unquote training, to figure myself out. Wow. A lot to unpack there about Jay. Jay, I I don't, I'm not like, it's interesting the way you phrase this, where it's like Mm -hmm. you're scared you'd blast too fast and ruin it. It's like you're ruining it for them or ruin the experience. To be honest, as everyone who has ever listened to this podcast knows, I have suffered from the same uh, blasting mm-hmm. too fast situation in the past. I and like that the term, by the way, because it's the, it doesn't sound negative. Blast too fast. Yeah. Like a rocket ship. Yeah. It, and for me, though, it was kind of like it made, you know, when doing the cost-benefit analysis, <laughs> I realized... What are you that, doing? Your public policy from Stanford? What do you mean cost benefit analysis? Yeah, I'm doing a fucking cost benefit analysis. I'm seeing the costs are way higher than the actual benefit, which is ten seconds of pleasure. You know what I'm saying? Well, so it sounded like he would he felt like he ruined their evenings. It wasn't really like he was. Exactly. About so it's a, it's interesting that he it, it became like a situation where he was you know, in his head about about ruining it for them. Which I understand too. But I don't see why either way. Either seems- way Either way, like this could, weighed into my like just deciding whether to uh, to continue on order with someone too. Well, Jay, if you think about it, you could have let the couple just have their fun and then get it up again. That's a perfect opportunity right there. The threesome. Oh, very interesting. Yeah, I missed out on that detail, Mother. That it's a, it was a threesome opportunity. Right. I think in that situation too, I would be fucking terrified if there were two women there. <laughs> And I'm just and, and I'm coming so quickly, and then thinking, oh my god, they might be judging me, or they might make, make fun of me afterwards, act the, and, or talk shit about me. That would drive me nuts. And and I'm, I I, I unfortunately has never never been offered a threesome opportunity like this before. But I could imagine going down that exact same path, Jay. Me too. Not about going down a path, but never been an opportunity to do a threesome thing. Um, but that being said, I think when you, I've talked a lot about this before. In terms of threesomes, if you want to have it, you should always like make sure you delineate all the parameters so you can get that out of the way by saying, I may blast too fast, but you guys can go at it till I'm ready to come oh. again. You, th- you talk about it, son. Yes, I like that, mother. Ashley's, Ashley. Yeah, you want to read right. Ashley's? I'll read Ashley's. I'm a married woman who is bi, but never had acted on my F on F feelings. Female on what? female feelings. Oh, I had one woman that I had a fantastic relationship with, but I didn't act on it because I was married and my husband was not having it. But six years later, I wish I would have. Oh. Hmm. Acting on the bisexual experience. I did kiss a girl, like yeah. Katy Perry said. Yeah. I did kiss a girl. I didn't like it. I mean, I, I it's interesting, though, for, for Ashley, because the husband was not having it, and yet six years later, she wished she would have. However, this even it didn't really matter if it was a man that she's wanting to hook up with or a woman she's wanting to hook up with or anyone in between. If the if your partner is not on the same page, you can't really do it. I mean, you you mm-hmm. you're gonna you're kind of ruining the the whole relationship contract. Well, you know? she said she's bi, but never acted on it. But it, what I'm saying is, it doesn't really matter the whole being bi or straight, whatever the fuck. It's still right. you have a partner. The partner is wanting you to hook up with someone, and then, you know, if you if you do, you're gonna you're gonna hurt the partner. Mm. So here's a, what I'm saying is, I I this might be a more of a fantasy situation where it's better in the mind, but the this is what I uh, this is how I've justified my life. Yeah. Just yeah. Like fan- fantasy is always going to be better. So why ruin the fantasy? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, okay. But I understand too that if if you are by, you know that you're by. That well, that 
yeah, you, you, you might feel like you're missing out on a whole world that you don't have access to. I could understand that as well, Ashley. Um, I, or you can just fantasize about women or males or whoever your same sex is and don't act on it. All right. Joseph says, <laughs> when I was younger, a really hot girl and I were talking in pr a private area and she leaned real close and asked if I ever saw something I wanted and just took it. I said no. Oh. This is something I would do. Joseph, <laughs> this, is some, this is a stupid ass move that I definitely would fucking do. And I think it's understandable. That's a, it's a lot of pressure. Is it maybe a new experience? You, you know, who I, I wouldn't know what to say. Yeah, I would, I would get all flabbergasted, I think. But is it because youth are very not confident and that's that's why because you're young? It might literally be like a naivete where it's like someone asks you a serious question, you or, or a question trying to flirt with you, and you respond in serious. Well, no, I actually have never been in, in a situation where I wanted something and just took it. Um, <laughs> I would do that. Uh, Holly says, having the college experience with casual sex. I understand this. I don't. First of all, I know you, and you had plenty of college experience. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. I think... Mm, You've told me about it. You've told no, this I think podcast I fucked, I about think it. I fucked three people in college. Oh, I thought it was more. Well, it doesn't. Need, it, that may be just penetration. Maybe you yeah, did other stuff. I did, but... I, I definitely didn't have, like, the whole casual sex thing in college. I wouldn't say... I, I did. I, or, yeah, I know you did. I know you did. Yeah, you, you don't but have that regret. I, you know what? I was, I'm happy that I was, you know, in college in the late 70s, early 80s. I, I was happy to be that because that, there was a lot of... There was no AIDS. There was a lot of freedom. Hmm. So that, that led to casual sex. There was really... There was very few even... STIs that were concerning. I mean, what, but the pregnancy was prevalent. Well, that is true. But then we had Roe v. Wade then, so yeah, yeah. And you was, and you had the choice of whether like you wanted to get an abortion or something like that. Right. We there was it was definitely a good time to be in college. And hormones, you of course had raging. condoms. We never use condoms. It's fucking nuts. You always use some other product like a diaphragm, IUD. Why didn't Cara anyone use Ovals. condoms? Uh, I don't, they, they're, we call them rubbers, first of all, and they're certainly not as comfortable as not using them. And we had something called N-Care ovals, which is these little suppositories you stick up your vagina. And your vagina. It, it, it had spermicide in it in the vagina. And there was a spermicide, it probably worked half the time. It was probably not the best thing. Maybe the condoms were not as good as they are today. You know, now they got like the ultra thin, barely feel it. You got <laughs> no, 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 no. Really? I don't think that was the issue. I think wow. It, look, if you were back in the seventies, would you choose to wear a condom versus wearing using a diaphragm or an IUD or? If the effectiveness the... were the same, I'd probably choose to to yeah go with that. Unless I was actually seeing that the condoms were making me. Uh, last last longer. longer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Anyway. All right. Moving right along. We understand that that uh, that regret, Holly. This is the last one. Lizzie says not acting on the wild sexual tension with a hot coworker. I mean, all of these. Uh, listen. In in summary, for this whole this whole little uh, Q and A that we've done, it, all of these make sense. Everyone they makes sense of why they chose not to what engage sexually and. Um, I understand that. And at the same time, I understand that, you know, these are fun fantasies that you could be living out. And, and so I understand that as well. So I feel for you. I'd, I'd like to fuck many of my coworkers. I fucked I think a coworker. We, I think everybody should go, everyone that we've read so far should go back in time and fuck the person they wish they fucked or people they wish they fucked, including me too in, in the mix. I'd like to add that. I don't know. I, I, I stand by, I think you guys all made the right decisions. And that, uh, you know, made you who you are today. Exactly. There are no wrong decisions. Well, I think, yeah, I think there might be. Um, anyway. No, there are always learning experiences. There are all learning saying. experiences. All right. I'll take that. I'll take that. All right. Thank you to everyone who has participated in this wonderful Q&A. That, that was a very good question. I, I really appreciated that. It made you think. That was a thinker. Thank you, Drew. And if you guys Thank want you, to participate Drew. in our Sneaky Freak Question of the Week, give us a text at 
3920. Hit us up. Do you notice there was one person missing from this? And that would be Tom, the elder statesman, because Tom yeah. probably had no regrets. <laughs> Tom very is the true. only one who has never regretted anything. That's very true. One thing I hate to hear is how people in long-term relationships get bored of sex. Our sponsor, Coral, is the answer for you. It's an easy-to-use, science-based app that improves your intimate life. If you're in a couple, Coral will help you feel closer and communicate more effectively with your partner. And Coral helps single people like me create deeper intimacy with themselves, which it has. Mom, you tried out Coral. What did you discover? They ask you like five or six questions, and then they give you an exercise, like a little homework to do. My homework with D's was to give a hug. And you know what? It really worked well. I liked it. I loved it, actually. It's amazing. They combine these science-backed teachings that you can read through with these easy-to-do exercises Coral is an amazing app because it's got three distinct features. One is that it allows you to connect. A secure, encrypted chat space for couples where Coral helps guide the conversation with prompts to build heat, connection, and communication skills. They also have guided audio exercises. And this is Coral's secret sauce. Coral's guided audio exercises help you explore your own and your partner's body in brand new ways, no matter how long you've been together. And finally, they have discussion forums. You can ask one of the Coral's experts and science advisors anything, anytime. And if you want to try out Coral, you can do that right now by visiting mycoral.co slash mom and download Coral and begin creating deeper intimacy with yourself and your partner today. That's mycoral.co slash mom, M-Y-C-O-R-A-L dot C-O slash M-O-M and use Coral today. The link is in the episode's description. So Cam, how has your life been down in Metagene? Metagene. Um, Colombia. For those, Sofia j- Vergara. For those uh, just tuning in, I am in Medellin, Colombia. Um, I've discovered that this town is really is designated for, it's, it's like a place for people to go and party, which is not really my scene, as you all know. <laughs> Um, however, I'm still enjoying myself. I'm starting to understand, first of all, it's a huge learning experience to be in this new culture. I'm learning about myself, how the limits of my trust and the ability to, uh, trust myself, to trust others. I'm learning about this culture and, and how sheltered I was. And I'm also realizing how you could really live like a king or queen down here if you have income coming from a different country. Is that motivating you to stay there? So that you can it's a little, a little bit. I, I was at brunch today and I spent like $15 and I had like, I mean, it was fucking gourmet feast, all different, different types of juices and matcha lattes and banana muffins. And this, I don't even know this Asian dish that I ate. It was fucking for how, amazing. Wait, for how much money? 15 bucks. It's a bargain. But I don't know. know if it's worth it to go live your life in another country just to get a better deal on a brunch. I know, but it was really fucking good. What about when I <laughs> call, when I when you call? I called you up the other day and I said, "How's it going?" And you're like, "I'm just trying to survive." Yeah, I mean, the whole thing is a real roller coaster. I'll give you an example, okay? How about this? Okay, okay. So um, over the weekend, it was the uh, Dia del Amor y Amistad, which is um, the day of love and friendship. Which oh, is I their thought it equivalent. was the day of the dad. Jeez. No. You know, it's the day of friendship. Uh, or, 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 or it's like their um, Valentine's Day down here. Oh, Valentine's Day. Okay. So I went out with a friend of mine. And we had a wonderful evening. We had this wonderful gourmet pizza dinner. And then we went to like this funky house dance party. And we went salsa dancing afterwards. That sounds totally fun. What is Very the fun. Over there? Okay, so... At the end of the night, at the funk house dance party, we're having a By good the way, time. We're, we're dancing we're, around. Wait a second. Were you yeah. not concerned about COVID? I believe it or not, I'm telling you, I think I've changed a little bit. I have, don't even fucking... I, today was like the first day I wore a mask in a long time. I wore a mask going into a grocery store. But other than that, it, I'm pretty... So COVID's I'm not kind a of balling deal. out a little. No, I mean, I'm just trying to avoid people that are coughing. At the fucking... 
at, at the pizza restaurant, you're reminding me, one of the waitresses was wear, wearing a mask. And my friend asked her, like, are you wearing a mask because you're sick? And she goes, oh, yeah. Sorry. And she goes, my friend goes, oh, I hope you feel better. And I was like, wait a minute. She's wearing a mask because she's sick. What the fuck? She coming to work? She's sick. And it, she probably has COVID. That's exactly what I said to my friend. And she's like, ah, it's probably just the flu or something like that. And I was like, no, it's first of all, even as a flu, stay the fuck home. But I don't know, maybe maybe she couldn't afford, you know, taking off a day of work or whatever. The the culture is way more lax about the whole fucking getting sick thing. You know, it's really weird. I bumped into someone I hadn't seen in a few years at the farmer's market the other day. And I'm like, how you doing? And I said, I just got through COVID. And she's like, I said, have you gotten it yet? And she goes, uh, I don't believe in any of that stuff. I go, what? And she goes, I don't believe in any of that stuff. But I have been, had, I had a cold twice. Yeah. A cold twice. What, what is that? How do you yeah. have a cold twice? No, no, no. Anyway. <laughs> code is code for COVID. Yeah, it's that's right. a code right. word. Yeah. Anyway, let me get back to this story so, okay. and finish it up. So we're having this wonderful evening. We're at the, towards the end of the night at this funk house dance party. And we're dancing towards the front of this little dance hall. And suddenly, I hear a this sound, which is like, and I was like, "What the fuck was that?" And I looked That's down. That's scary. I looked down. I looked back. I looked down, and the girl behind me had projectile vomited oh all my. over me. No way. Yes. No fucking way. Yes. I you looked got down. Dead? I looked oh down. Oh my god! And this is your nightmare. Fucking all over my shirt. Wait, in the front, and because you turned around, she vomited right at your chest. I I think I I was kind of like facing sideways, and and she somehow projectile vomited on the side of my chest. I I'm not. I feel like puking right now hearing this. I I, cannot, I literally I, I couldn't believe. I was stunned. You used to puke very easily. One time you saw your Cocker Spaniel shit on the floor and you looked at it and you vomited right on the shit. Yeah. That was when you were six years old. But you're, you, have you changed since then? Did you vomit yourself? I felt, I, I actually just started laughing. I couldn't believe. I was like, no way did this just happen. Did and you take a picture? I didn't fucking take a picture of this puke on my fucking, this person's puke on my fucking ch- chest. I would have done a TikTok video right then and there. I would have been like, oh, I got to get this on TikTok. This is too good to be true. I couldn't fucking believe it. I, we w- not, wait a second. You know what? There, there's something going on. Maybe it's Mercury in retrograde because remember we were sitting having dinner before you left and a bird shit right on me. It just like flew by and shit like a bunch of shit right on me. And everybody's like, oh, that's good luck. I'm like, no, that's bad luck. That's disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so maybe this... being shit on and vomited on is like because really Mercury is in luck. retrograde. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, Wait. I don't know if this had anything to do with Mercury and retrograde. What did she look like, this girl? I don't I don't know. I just saw her cover her mouth afterwards. She turned away and ran to the bathroom. She didn't even say, I'm sorry? No, ma'am. She literally just puked on me. I don't think she's capable of saying sorry. She literally had puke in her mouth. Wait a second. Do you realize, like, she could have had COVID? Ma'am. No, I was at a dance party. She clearly was fucked up on alcohol or drugs oh, or something. Oh, she was drinking. Oh, jeez. Yeah. There, yeah. yeah. She didn't have COVID, mom. She literally oh, fucking God. projectile vomited on me. And you didn't know who this person was? No. I immediately went to the bar with, with How my did you friend. not tell me this? That is so funny. I went to my bar. The, my friend cleaned me off with a wet towel, which I very much appreciated. And then... Um, and then we went salsa dancing afterwards. I'm impressed. I would have gone right home and said, I, 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 the smell of someone's puke was making me sick. I got to get out of here. It kind of did. It, she, my friend really did clean me up pretty well. But I think I did. I got home. And I put all of my clothes into the into laundry immediately. Uh, you think? I might I, I might say you might. You, it's probably a thrift store t-shirt anyway, so you might as well No, it was it. not, Mom. No. It was a good t-shirt? It was Armani Exchange. Oh, yeah. I think exchange means they're lower tier. Yeah, brand. but Armani, yeah. Yeah. Well, she had to puke on your Armani. <laughs> could have been your. It could have been your thrift store clown like t- t- t-shirts. It had to be. I would have been Armani. more upset if she if she puked on that. 
Anyway, that was that's, well, that was uh, pretty that's, impressive. That is my experience in Medellin in a nutshell. It's up and down. I'm having fun at the one minute. I'm having fun dancing. This next, next minute, minute, someone's puking, puking on me. That is so funny. Yeah, but I'm I'm uh, happy that you are handling all this with ease and grace. Thank you, mother. Yeah, what's going on in your life? Oh, I just. Oh. Been, do you ever see this movie Driving Miss Daisy? No. Uh, it's basically, you know, this this guy, um, Morgan Freeman, drives, uh, I forgot who who's Daisy, but he, he drives her around when she's sick and old. And meanwhile, I'm driving Dee's around, back and forth to doctor's appointments for his ankle. Oh. Yeah, I'm Is I'm it driving... bringing you guys closer? No. It's it's It's, 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 dri- it's, it's creating driving resentment. me crazy. No, it's, it's it's he's doing. He actually cooked dinner with his scooter. He finally Aww. got himself this wheel about, so he's he's actually been pleasant, but it it has put like a a damper on our sex life. I'll tell you that much. Well, obviously, you can't do shit that, with that. I'll just share that with you, because well, yeah, you know, there's well, you not a, a lot of things you can do. The, yeah, we got a cast. I got the pillows all over the place. I got I got Buddy that's j- jumping on top of him while he's sleeping. Did you did, oh. have you tried to have sex with the cast? No. Would you crazy? Uh, why not? Do well, you know how paranoid he is about germs and everything? That's, okay. It's not. You don't want to get any germs in that cast. It's okay, not even a cast. It's, it's 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 like a I don't moon know boot. What, it's not even a moon boot. I don't know. The guy just wrapped it up and said he did a great job on it. Okay. So the, it, I'm driving Miss Daisy, going to my own doctor's, turning. 64 on Saturday. Look at 64, that. 64, like like the Beatles song, When I Get Old, Losing My Mind. <laughs> Is it 64? Many years ago. Is it 64? When 60... I'm 64, yeah. Yeah? Wow. That's very I exciting. But- I butchered the heck out of the lyrics. <laughs> um, but, how, yeah, I'm turning 64. How do you feel about that? I feel like literally like my mind is of a 39 year old, but my mm-hmm. body is telling me it's it's the other way around. You're more like a 69 year old. Oh, interesting. So your body or feels I should older say a than ni- 64. A 93 year old. My body right now is is just it's it's learning to survive. Oh wow. It's what just it? it's all it's it's fine. So I'm going to these doctors and I come up with the, I come up with an, uh, I'm I'm noticing some trends that okay. when you, yeah like I I actually going to do a TikTok video about this because if you can get in the next day with the doctor yeah you're fucked yeah you don't want to do that shit every other doctor how long is that wait time oh three months I got an appointment for an eye doctor in November yeah that's you know, what you want yeah. Meanwhile, if you can get in the next day, you're screwed. If you hear paper like crinkling when they're asking for a date, yep. that means they got a paper calendar versus a, a, a computer. Yep. Then you know that they're not up with the latest technology. Eh. I completely agree with this. I yeah, went to the sa- same day acupuncturist. Same Horrible. Oh, 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 definitely. That's gonna suck. Yeah. And it, and if they're all all they care about is getting your insurance information, there's another issue there. Here's what here's what you want. You what? want you want them to say we got a three month wait, and then they call you the next day and say you know we had a last minute opening. Do you want to come in yeah. tomorrow? That's and this is the key. Ideal. This is ideal. Like well, I I had a better way of dealing with my eye doctor. I just called up and I said, I feel like my eyeball is popping out of my eye. Maybe I need to get oh. in sooner than three months. And they got me in a couple of days later and realized it wasn't popping out of my eye. It was actually <gasps> the, the contact that I forgot to remove two months prior. Oh, my fucking God. Okay, so you can say it's a fucking emergency and you cut the line. You just say it's an emergency, yeah. You're yep. nuts. Yep. Well, You're anyway, nuts. I've, I'm just taking note of all the different issues facing me. I mean, I go to see... You're my favorite doctor. I spend 45 minutes with him. At the end, I gave him a hug and said, you know, I love you. Oh, my God, Mom. He, anyone who could sit and listen to me for 45 minutes deserves a hug and a little loving. Oh, my fucking God. But meanwhile, you go into the doctor. They, you got to get a, a colonoscopy. You got to get a mammogram. You got to do this. You got to do that. There's a, there's a lot of maintenance when you are, get to be my age. Are it's they just, asking it's... about your sex life at, at your age? You know what? No, no one asked me about that. That's interesting. Except that, they, except they, they asked me oh, about oh, mine. Oh, oh, you know what? I just realized one of the gynecologists said 
we had you written down that you haven't had sex in a year. Is that true? I said, are you kidding? It's me. What are you talking about? I have a podcast called Sex Talk with My Mom. You think I haven't had sex in a year? Excuse me. What? <laughs> I have a podcast called Sex Talk with My Mom. Definitely had sex in a year. It depends that what you call so, it. No, but it depends yeah. what you classify as sex. Penetrative Penetration, sex. yeah. But, but by choice. Yeah, but we know the qualifications. By choice. By yeah, choice. Yeah. By choice. But, I mean, of all things, that, that is a question that they ask me. Unreal. Anyway. You know, so I, I, I... That's what it's like heading into the 64-year-old wow. birthday. Wow. So are you feeling good about it or no? At least I am, I'm, I'm, I'm above ground. That's always a good thing. <laughs> you know, some I'm things could, above it, could be well. wor- it could be worse. So, could yeah. be worse. It could be worse. And then it got worse. Yeah. Anyway. Um, that's about it. It probably is more, oh, planning your sister's wedding. That's always fun too. All right. Are you just going to start rattling off all the shit that you're doing in your life or what? You ask them, what's going on in my life? This is what's going on in my life. I'm going to doctors, planning weddings and driving Miss Daisy. All right. All or right. I should say driving Miss, Miss Deezy. Deezy. All right. Well, should we move on to hit on? Oh, one other thing I might add. I had a, a conversation the other day with someone who said they don't use vibrators. And I said, why? She said, because we have, if, after a while, the less you use it, the more you think about using it. What a fucked up way of looking at life. Wait, so it's, it's after a while. After a while. The you less don't you have, use it. Yes. You lose it. Well, so she just doesn't have a desire. I told her you should definitely get a vibrator and get that thing revved up again. Get that engine running again. What in God's name would, would how, how do you find it time to garden and do all the other things and no self pleasure? Hmm. I, you yeah. know, I would love to explore this because I feel, I feel this strongly. You know, when I, when I'm in go mode, it's very hard for me to stop and just fucking prioritize self pleasure. You know, it's, just, it's kind of the same thing as what people do with exercise, myself included. Oh, everything else takes priority before exercise. It's a waste of time. Or, so why is it that you think that it's so important, like exercise? I think self-pleasure, meaning orgasm, can lead to oxycodone. I mean, oxytocin. I, I, I it's, think, good, it's good. It's for your hormones. I think it's also kind of like a, um, it's almost like a, it's not a political statement, but it's almost like a, um, a statement about life. Like life is... Eros, the erotic is worthwhile. It, it's an experience of pleasure just for the the acknowledgement that we are alive in these physical bodies. And it's you know, do you, you see what I'm saying with that? Yeah, I think like hedonism. It's, it's no, no. Thing. Sometimes that the hedonism is kind of like on the other end, where it's like, right? Uh, well, we might as well just have you know fuck, fuck. our brains out because what yeah. life is not really that important. But you just but, are saying it's your life force. Yeah, I'm 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 saying that it's kind of like a, an acknowledgement of the 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 wonderful beauty that we have as being in these human bodies. Is that Cam Zuppers? No, mother, that's a fucking bonus right there. That's a oh, fucking boy. bonus. Oh. Um. Anyway, I understand what you're saying, but I still feel like yeah, you don't want to give up on you don't want to give up on that little area of your body. Don't don't let that little. What was it? The boat, the man in the boat. Yeah, go to go to waste. Fly away from the shore. I I don't know, but it was one of our sneaky freaks that don't don't let that something about the man in the boat. Yeah, it, she was it, talking about a toe in her man in the boat. She was not talking. Yeah, yeah she, she was talking about a toe going into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. All right, I, I that was pretty good, Kim. Thank you. All right, let's go on to hit on or shit on, mother. Hit on or shit on. We got some co- a couple quest- uh, comments here that you left for us that we wanted to determine if they are a hit on or a shit on. Well, uh, what do we I got this start, week? I want to start with Boris. Okay. He says, hi, I'm Boris. I'm living in Plainfield in Chicago, and I want a discreet relationship with a cougar in my area. That's it. No. Then it also says, at, right after that, hi, I'm Boris. I'm living in Plainfield in Chicago. I want a discreet relationship with a cougar in my area. Yeah, I, I, I just I didn't bother reading the second part because it was a continuation. It was basically it's just, a copy and paste of the oh, first part. Yeah, why did he do two? He, he means this. He's not maybe fucking he around wanted, over here. Maybe he wanted one relationship with you and one relationship with me because I'm not a from. cougar. He he wants a discreet relationship with a cougar, mom. How do you know how old he is, mom? She's he, I'm not a cougar. 
If you don't know that, you can be a male cougar or a female cougar. Okay. It doesn't matter. All right. Well, that I'm going to say that's a hit on from Boris. He was trying to hit on me, or he's just trying to get me to advise him about the, all the cougars in the Plainfield, Chicago area. Well, he probably would go for you, um, but he also might look be looking for some advice. Well, I'm actually interested in the next one, which says, the subject line was, I want talk mom. Okay. It's from Sammy. He says, I'm Sammy, in all caps. I'm from Yemen. I'm 37 years old, and I want to talk old women for six. Oh, six, I like six. that. Yeah, talk old women for six. What the hell does that mean? I want talk old women for six. Uh, well, it's probably sex, but he, I'm thinking he, he wants like a, a sex talk. I think he wants like a um, a sex talk with my mom. No, I think it's more of like a dirty talk with you. I, you I think, think he's also calling you an old woman. I know old women. I don't <laughs> like that. I I like older woman maybe, but not old women. Well, but it's also a hit on because he wants to talk to you for sex for six. Yeah. Uh, okay. Sammy. Well, so so we're going to give Sammy a hit on or a shit on? Uh, that's a hit on with an inadvertent shit on. Yes, exactly. Whenever people say, you look good for your age, it's, yeah. it's like, a, is that a hit on or is that a shit on? Yeah, it's a, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. But this, I think we can, both of us can agree on from, I don't know why I made this for 50. Oh, this is going to be good. This person says, why do people talk about this stuff with their children? It's so sick. Call me a prude. I don't care. You're He's a prude. referring to me and you. You're a prude. St- You're definitely a prude, and, and we don't care if you care. We, we personally don't care. Talk about it. Why? Why, why, are, you, why are you hiding it in the, in the dark where people can create shame around it? I don't understand that. When we, we meet so many people that say, I don't understand how you can have a podcast where you talk so openly about sex. Why the fuck not? It's a beautiful thing. We need to acknowledge it. You know, I, I by the way, I recognize, you know, we started this episode by me kind of saying, you know, very selective and prude and who I have sex with. It makes me sound very um, sex negative. But I, I disagree, just for the record. I told you, I don't think you sound sex negative. Well, you know, it's, I don't want to make it sound like I'm against sex or, you know, I'm, I'm, so aware of the benefit I, th- I think it is the the acknowledgement of us living life and it's a beautiful thing for people to do together but it, there are some you know it's, it's like anything it comes with some risks and and those should be acknowledged as well there are consequences for your actions that's right so anyway but i, I don't know why that, i made this can go fuck himself yeah. Well, also, I mean, we're not, it's not, he says with their children, it sounded like you're like six years old and I'm talking about the sex blanket, which is what we were talking about, like what, what to do mm. with when you got, when you got a little, uh, you know, little FDC, FDC, fucking dried cum on your sheets. Fucking dried cum? So a lot of people, uh, so we're going to say that that's a shit on. That that's he, a shit on. But the, a lot of people commented about where they get their, their sex blankets. Some people oh. said Walmart has... One guy said, dude, they have waterproof mattress covers. To, I think that was to you. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, do you know it's kind of on my my goal my goal list to start selling Pleasure Podcast sex blankets? You know, just out of curiosity, for those listening right now. Yeah, who would buy a, that? Give us a text if you think you'd buy that. If I made, like, if I matched up with, like, an excellent uh, sex uh, product manufacturer and started selling sex blankets, would you buy it from us? Give us a text at 310-356-3920. You know, along with that could be my favorite thing. You know what I'm going to say. God damn it, mother. Electric toothbrush that functions as a vibrator. Too. Yeah, we know. We know. That's your podcast. You want that toothbrush. to be part of the pleasure store? We're going to have a whole pleasure store, the sex talk of the mom store. Would you rather have a blanket that said sex talk of my mom that you're fucking on? Or would you rather have a no, one that mom. says pleasure podcast? No, it's just going to say, <laughs> it's going to be like pleasure product. I mean, it's a it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a whole branded thing. All right. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's we're, a whole we're, branding we're, we're, thing. You're adding a, a new career yeah, onto your list. That's right. You don't have enough that's going on in your crazy ass better gene life. I know. I know. I'm just motivated by this. Okay. What, what, mom, is it time for. Oh. Mom's news. Mom's news. Mom's, Mom's news. news. Mom's news is a segment of the show where my mother shares earth-shattering, groundbreaking, need-to-know information. This week, what do we got, mother? 
We got one, a shout out to our sneaky freak Cheryl for this article that she sent to me from Mom's News. Oh, hell yeah. Ironically, yeah. Uh, I don't know if the word is ironically or coincidentally, mm-hmm. I came up with the same Mom's News. So Cheryl- That's coincidental. Or it could be that we I found some good solid stuff that wasn't from some tabloid and here Well, what is. is this, Mother? This is actually the original, it was a study that was done, and this is an international journey of urology. How's that, huh? Wow. I actually saw this on international TikTok. International journey <laughs> of urology? It's called the International Journal, not journey. Okay. Of urology. Okay, all right. And, it, and the title is called Enhanced Visualization of Female Squirting, the Long Lost Answer to the Question About Female Squirting. No, that, so many people over the years have asked, is it made out of semen, like female semen? Like, a female like ejaculate? A, a female ejaculate from the prostate of the female or something, or similar to the prostate of a female? I don't think women, women have, women prostates. have prostates. No. Okay. Well, similar to the skein's gland, as, as you will, uh, or is it just straight up urine? And I always thought it was straight up urine because the one time I thought I squirted, it was I think it was definitely pee because I don't remember squirting, so I'm, I'm guessing it was pee. Okay. I either peed or I squirted once in my life. Mm-hmm. In case anyone out there was listening and wondering about peeing versus squirting, I don't know what the hell came out, but there was a spot on there that was not... Not some sort of semen spot. Okay. Hence, Thank we you, need. Mom. I I could have used one of those blankets, but anyway, the study says that they were not sex workers that they were using. It was this, a current. It was women who were able to squirt. They they were and a catheter was inserted in before sexual stimulation, and the bladder was emptied. So they emptied out the bladders of these women. The, then they mixed in a mixture of indigo carmine Oof. and saline, and it was injected into the bladder. And, and I'm sure these women got really horny after having that I done I was to thinking them. about that when I read through this. I was like, God damn, how are you having sex after having all this shit put, dr- taken out of you and put in you? Hey, yeah, yeah. Well, it was, they weren't having sex. They were, it says sexual stimulation was provided. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what was going on with the sexual stimulation, but maybe they were just so Basically, having... they found, these, these researchers found five squirters. They did. And the, the women were two were in their 30s, two were in their 40s, one in the 50s, participated in the study. Mm-hmm. All the women were able to squirt. Three squirted only with manual sexual stimulation and two with penetrative sexual stimulation. So maybe you're right. They Someone came in, to, like a fluffer came in to fuck these women. It could have been a, uh, you know, like an, you know, an inserting a a dildo? penetrative dildo or something like that. Oh, yeah. you're right. You're right. Well, anyway, guess what? Mm-hmm. The discharge fluid was blue in all cases, confirming the bladder as the source. The fluid was PSA positive in four pa- patients. What the hell PSA positive means? I have no idea. But the main component prostate, of the squirt... Prostate-specific antigen. Is... Oh, okay. That was pretty good, Kim. Thank you. The, the main component of squirt fluid is urine, but may also contain fluid from the skein's gland, which is the female prostate. This is the first report in which visualization of squirting was enhanced. What a great call. So, the end to all the questions. No, it's not really. Why? Because they said it still could be a little bit from the skein's glands. Yeah, it can contain fluid from the skein's gland, which would is the equivalent to the female prostate, basically. Right. So but I mean, think... Which is where you would think the female ejaculate is kind of coming from. Right. But it looks like, it seems like the majority of fluid was urine. The main component of squirt fluid is urine. Urine, yeah. In these five it's, women. Right. So uh, if, you're, if you're into the golden showers, go for it. That's it. Yeah, I don't know. I, when I was reading through this, were you didn't getting make, all revved up? I don't know how. I've never been with a squirter, as far as I know. Oh, that's not true. I think I was with someone where it got very wet. She peed. I'm starting to remember this, but it it didn't matter. It didn't matter whether she was wet, dry. You know, it it, it well, it's a sloppy sport. Let me tell you, it's a sloppy sport, and it, it's God sloppy. knows I'm bringing a lot of fluid to the table as well. Oh, we heard all about that. It's smelly as semen filled room that you that reeks. This is part part of why I think we need to have a pleasure blanket. Oh, that's where you came up with this idea. Yeah, because you have this. Thing. Anyway, thank you very much for bringing that all that science to the table. I mean, I'm amazed that you had a a, a real publication to to share from, Mom. 
the, I am, I, I was shocked that I came up with this myself and that Cheryl verified it. So hope you guys enjoyed that. That was Mom's News. Mom's News. It's that time of the show that gets you all hot and bothered down there, making you want to squirt all over the goddamn place. Oh, that's the time of the show I love. It's called Cam's Uppers. Cam's Uppers is the place to be. Fun living is the life for me. This is Cam's Uppers, the time of the show where I get to share something near and dear to my heart, something that my mother typically finds squirt worthy or (laughs) boring as fuck or Deborah Downer. Wow. It's Cam's Uppers. Cam's Uppers. What do you got for us today? I started reading a book called The Surrender Experiment. Oh my God. Oh yeah. Why? Because I'm surrendering, mother. What are you surrendering to? I'm surrendering... For, you know, he this this guy who is the author of this fucking book? I, I, I should okay, we up. don't care. You don't you don't think anyone's gonna want to read this book after no, I no no one it? Yeah, people are listening to sex talk with my mom for sex and funny comedies. They're it relates listening. to that. It relates to that. This All is right, from well, Michael Singer. Okay, he talks about how you know the world has existed for millennia without our involvement in it, right? Okay, you know it, just our. Everything in our past has led to what is unfolding today. Millions of years. We don't need to control everything so that it, it, it kind of molds to our desires. And so the alternative is to acknowledge this and to just surrender. So basically, don't worry about global warming because you're just going to end up melting away anyway. Mm, that actually, I don't. that's a good argument, Mom. No, I don't <laughs> think that's right. I don't think that's right, <laughs> but I think that you can acknowledge that that the that the world is in a shitty place because of human in, you know interaction, and then choose to go in a different direction. It's not that we don't have free will, you know. We can still act on based on our will, but for the most part, we also are in this kind of like predetermined path. It's kind of a paradox. But right. anyway, I'm I'm fascinated by this shit, and I'm constantly reminding myself, hey. Just surrender to whatever's happening right now. Don't try to change the things I cannot change. Oh, it sounds like a 12-step program there. I knew you were going to fucking go down the full serenity, serenity prayer. prayer. I know, I know. Yeah. Anyway. God, I'm, grant I'm fa- me the serenity. Because especially being in a foreign place right now, I could feel myself wanting to control all of my surroundings, you know, to try to control my experiences, optimize it, make sure I'm safe, all this sort of shit. Well, and I did want to get Truthfully, I can't that. do shit. I know, I just have been watching... I know. Actually, I shouldn't say I've been watching. That'd be a lie because I haven't really figured out how to watch you. But I had you and your sister and brother all give me the i. You're leaving your iPhone to, to so you can track us. A tracking device, I Jesus track Christ. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So that in case I haven't heard from you, I can go find it. And your sister goes, "This is creepy. Why do you have to know this?" And I said, "What if you're kidnapped?" She goes, "Okay, fine." Oh my God! You didn't ask me that, so thank you for not doing that. Yeah, I would. I would have some issues with that. It, it, that's like the balance of uh, privacy versus uh, security. You know, yeah, freedom yeah. versus security. I don't well, need the you good over thing, looking over my, my shit. You don't Although have to I worry because I don't even know how to track you. That's how I figured. I think I already shared my location for, with you the other night when it's I went too on a date. Late. Anyway, anyway, you that totally was no. You just fucking usurped and brought me. Up. I mean, what I was trying to say was like. You know, I was trying to be so safe the other night when I went to this funk dance party, make sure that I'd, nothing bad happened to me. I wasn't drugged or any sort of or, or robbed or anything like that. And then you of didn't course, manifest that you might be puked on. You and were manifesting course, everything else. Yeah, exactly. I surrender to the fact that someone is going to be fucking projectile vomit all over my goddamn shirt. I, I can't believe that happened to you. Yeah. Um, well. <laughs> anyway, that's Cam's uppers. That was a beautiful Cam's uppers, if I've ever heard one. Yeah. Let us all surrender. You know, Cam, nothing gives me more pleasure than when I see people joining Patreon. Patreon.com slash sex talk with my mom is the best way for you to support us. If you're enjoying this show at all, give us a gift, please. Give us a it's little not, gift. Show show your appreciation for our hard work and effort to make this not only on audio, but video. You can watch it on YouTube. That's right. So just, even if you think that, that $5 doesn't mean anything to anybody, it will. It means a lot to us that we know you're supporting us. And if you want to leave us a rating and review, we love that. We especially love when you share this with a friend. Those three things will make our day. If you're enjoying the show, please 
rate and review, leave, share with a friend, and send us a few shillings. A little shekels. With that, Mother. You and let go- me tell you about the birds and the bees and the flowers and the trees and squirting all over your sex blankety. Sex blankies. It's sex, like you're so close blankie. to the rhyme. I, and then you uh, just it's like when I tried again. to shoot the moon and spades and I always got the witch thrown at me at the end. The fuck? All right. People that are card players understand what I'm talking about, Cam, okay? We love you all. Thank you for tuning in. We do in. love you guys. We know you have a lot of other podcasts to choose from. We're happy that you chose us. Bye-bye. You are listening to a pleasure podcast. For more from our sex podcast collective, visit pleasurepodcasts.com.